Hello, Internet. My name is Lave, and I watched Mary Magdalene, which is directed by Garth Davis, who previously directed Lion. I don't think I've met anyone who's seen Lion and didn't like it. It is a lovely movie, so I was really looking forward to his next one, which stars Rooney Mara, as you guessed it, Mary Magdalene, a free-thinking young woman who one day meets a wandering rabbi known as Jesus, and she joins him and his apostles on their journey to Jerusalem, helping to spread his message of love and forgiveness. So this movie is relevant because Easter is approaching, but also because of the Time's Up and the Equality for Women movement, which dominated the award season and the news and media at the moment. I don't think this is a shameless cash-in on those trends. I think it's got a genuine mission statement of telling the story of this woman who, spoiler alert, witnessed the last few weeks of Jesus' life before he was crucified, and then the establishment changed her story and reduced her to a footnote in history. And it does sort of do that. When we first meet her, she's a free-thinking, caring woman who is not a prostitute. She's living with her male-dominated family who expect her to marry someone of their choosing and become a mother. And when she resists, they try to exercise the demon from her. But then Jesus shows up and captivates and inspires her. So she leaves with him and we witness his story story through her eyes. Now the film doesn't insinuate that JC and Eminem become Eminem that doesn't work. <laughs> now the film doesn't insinuate that Jesus and Mary become romantically involved. I've seen a couple of reviews that criticize the film for the lack of chemistry between the two, but then I don't think the film is going for that. Maybe that's a result of Darren Brown's The Da Vinci Code which says that Mary and Jesus got together. This film just suggests that she understands him and his teachings. She recognises his fear of what is inevitably going to happen to him and comprehends and relays his message of not letting hate consume you and forgiveness being the way to the kingdom. Now this causes a bit of unrest with the other apostles who believe that Jesus is favouring her over them. But for me, it never really feels like the film truly explores that. It's grappling with that idea, but then it's also telling the familiar story that we already know. For example, Jesus sends Mary and Peter on this little side mission, which does lead to quite an intense and emotional scene where Peter witnesses Mary's compassion firsthand, but then it's quickly forgotten about and they rejoin the group and then the film carries on. It does get addressed again at the end of the film where Mary and Peter run into conflict again and they have a discussion and she says my voice will be heard so it's somewhat ironic that it has taken 2,000 years for it to be heard. From a visual standpoint, there is some stunning photography. The very first frame is visually arresting and it continues with wide shots of the landscape that makes you feel like you're there in this environment. The environment is another character in this film. It's a mood piece. It's serene until you get to the hustle and bustle of Jerusalem. It's all very grand, but then it's also very intimate with some lovely close-up shots of the actors so you really do get to study their face and their emotions, but I want to say that maybe it's a bit too beautiful. For example, one of Mary's brothers has like this Abercrombie and Fitch haircut. It's too well groomed and Rooney Mara herself is so beautiful, almost to the point it's distracting. Sometimes I got the impression that I was watching a high-end product commercial. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Having said that, I don't have any issues with any of the performances really, apart from the fact that they do speak in broken English, which is a personal pet peeve of mine. And I'm not entirely convinced of Joaquin Phoenix's interpretation of Jesus. What I do like though is that they go for it. He is the Messiah and you see him perform miracles. They don't offer scientific explanations as to how he's doing it, like in Exodus Gods and Kings, for example, where you see Christian Bales Moses lying on the beach and you see that meteorite go overhead, which could explain how the Red Seas parted. They don't do that in this. He straight up performs miracles in this. So I liked that, but I'm not entirely convinced by his performance. I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it, which kind of summarizes how I feel about this film in general. So that's my thoughts on Mary Magdalene and pause the video if you wanna take a closer look at my enjoyment tracker now. There's a lot to admire in this film, but then it doesn't really ever take off. But then I can't say that it nosedives either. 
I don't feel compelled to watch this one again. I don't think I'll be buying it on Blu-ray, but I might watch it again when it gets a replay at Easter. So thanks very much for watching my review of Mary Magdalene. I really do appreciate it. If you can, give this video a like, and don't forget to share the lave. Because you're worth it.